Greetings everyone, I'm Daphne Lee. Many of you know me as an instructor in the computer lab at The Point. Today we're going to explore the Apple iPad as well as the Android tablet and an app that you can use on either as well as your smartphone called Overdrive and another app called Libby where you can check out a public library book assuming you have a library card and read that digital book on your iPad or your Android tablet or even your smartphone. So again, I'm Daphne. Come with me as we explore Overdrive and Libby. And here we are. And what you're seeing is the Apple iPad. And we want to download the app first. Okay, so as many of you know, we're going to tap on the Apple Store apps, the App Store apps. If we were looking at a an Android product, we would go to the Google Play Store, right? We're looking for search, and search is in the lower right-hand corner. This magnifying glass will become what you know as your search tool. It's universally recognized as search, so all I have to do is tap it. And I need my keyboard, so I'm going to tap in the search window, and I'm going to strike the keys spelling overdrive, and there we have it. So I'm going to tap overdrive. And here we have it. Now since I already have it, mine says open. Your Apple App Store view here should say get. And it may prompt you for your Apple ID and password. So just a point, a reminder, always know your Apple ID and Apple password. And for those of you driving an Android, the same goes for you. You'll want to know your Google ID, which is an email address ending in gmail.com and the password that goes with that email address. Okay, So I'm going to tap the home button on my iPad and I'm going to open OverDrive. And you're looking at my bookshelf. So let me start at the beginning. When you're setting up your Apple or your OverDrive app, you'll need two things. You'll need your municipal library card and with everything going on today I think many libraries are assigning ones on online so check that out check your library and uh, they'll ask you for your name and address to create your account but you'll need that library card and that library card number and it'll prompt you to fill it in okay so I live in the city of Plano Plano Texas I'm looking at my Plano Public Library This is actually the library page. Each month, the library is going to feature a different set of books. Right? So this is what you're looking at. This month, it looks like they're uh, featuring Harry Potter, the series. Right? April is National Poetry Month, so some books on poetry. Right? And these are called thumbnails. Jane Austen's adaptations, some of her books, okay? So, after you've connected with your public library, this is what your library view looks like. If there are no books there that you're interested in, but you've got a favorite author, you can always do a search. So here again we have the magnifying glass and when we tap it, it brings up our keyboard. Well, What do you want to search for? Okay. I'm a big John Grisham fan. Don't get a lot of time to read his books so there's John Grisham. And here are the books that John Grisham has written over over the time over the years. Right? I think that's his first, A Time to Kill. So after you've done your search, either by author name, title, or category, or even subject, these are the results of your search. And John Grisham is such a prolific writer, he's got more than one page. So I can tap on another page, see if I can find a book I haven't read. All right. Now we're looking here at some audiobooks. And we know this because under the thumbnail, the picture, 
It tells us the title of the book, the platform, meaning audio or text, and if the book is available, meaning borrow or place a hold. So place a hold would tell us that the book is not available, but we can get in the queue or the waiting time waiting list for this book. If I'm looking for something to, in this case, listen to immediately, I can just tap borrow. All right, I'm gonna hit cancel here for a minute. We'll come back to audiobooks. I want to find a text-based book. And I, again, I can tell by this icon that it's an audiobook. All right? Lower left corner of the app is the back button. So I'm going to go back, see if I can find a, a narrative, a text-based book. Okay? And here we go. Here's one. Theodore Boone, The Abduction. Right, that's the thumbnail of the book and the title. There's the author and the fact that it's an ebook, e for electronic. And if I wanted to borrow it, I could. If I wanted to bookmark my place here, I could do that as well. But if you tap the thumbnail, it takes you into the details of the book. All right? Here's a description. If you can, if you haven't read it, does this book sound interesting to you? Okay, just tap that, and I will get more to read. All right, details, publishing date, ISBN number, and size. So this is 6,000 KB, short for kilobytes. Not so much, you don't have to worry about that so much. Size, hard to equate it to pages, and we'll talk about that for a minute. Well, if you haven't read any of or his books or you want to know more about the abduction, read a sample. Notice that the app is taking us out of Overdrive and we're into Safari and that's Apple's browser. So I'm on the internet. Translation, if you want to read a sample of the book, you will need an internet connection. And I can read some of his books. Notice how I'm making the app move. And again, the app here is Safari, Apple's internet browser. A light tap or touch of the screen and a swipe, as they call it. So I'm swiping right to left, advances me forward. A swipe from right to left. I'm sorry, from left to right. A swipe from left to right takes me back a few pages. So I'm reading a sample of John Grisham's book. I'm advancing from tapping and touching from right to left. And then I can go backwards by starting my swipe on the left-hand side, lightly continuing to touch the screen of my device, backward, forward. All right. I've read enough of the sample to know that I would like to check this book out, so I'm going to hit the home button so I can return to the app called Overdrive. And I'll tap Borrow. Here in my borrow option, I can read it for seven days, or if I tap that arrow, I've got three choices, one week, two week, or three weeks. Okay, but I think it's gonna take me longer than seven days. I'll tap the two week option and then borrow. And then I can select download. EPUB is just short for electronic publication. So again, the internet connection, so that it'll download from the library server to your mobile device, right? And I want to close this window. Okay. We've done all we can do here, talking about the book. So lower left corner, the back button. And this takes me back to John Grisham's results when I searched for John, the author called John Grisham, and I wanted a text-based book. All right. Well, let's take a minute and look around the app. Upper left-hand corner, three horizontal bars today is known as menu, and when you tap it, there's your menu of options. 
We've spent a lot of time this morning at the library. From the library, the bookshelf, and I'll just tap it, takes me back to all of those books that I have currently checked out or some that may be expired. So just like you see in your home, the bookshelf is where your stack of books, whether they be narrative or audiobooks, reside. Library and bookshelf. All right? That was in the upper left-hand corner. On the upper right-hand corner, we can sort. Those are the arrows here. Or I could edit. And we'll come back to the edit feature. I want to go back. So I'm going to hit the menu option and tap my library. Okay, so library with its featured books, my search options, my account. And right now we're looking in the app called Overdrive. To actually read the book, you need to get to menu, bookshelf. A single tap on my most recent book, and here is John Grisham's Theodore Boone, The Abduction. And again, to advance into the book, a swipe from right to left. I'm lightly touching the screen. Okay. I would normally ask for questions or if I could repeat anything, but I will continue. Okay, I'm inside my book, as you can see, chapter one of John Grisham's book. In looking around the app, upper right-hand corner is a bookmark. You need a bookmark not to mark your place in the book, but as much as to save a place that you want to return to because of an important point. When you close OverDrive and reopen it, it will automatically return to the page that you left off. All right. To configure or, or customize your view, I'm going to tap in the middle of the screen. And if you'll look at the bottom, I actually get controls after I've tapped. So display, brightness, tap that. And this is where you, the overdrive driver, get to select how bright your screen is. And that's the default there on the left, which is basic white. The middle icon represents what they call sepia, so it adds a, a cream background. And finally, reverse or inverted settings, black background, white text. All right. You want to think about your display if it's late at night. You don't want the blue screen effect to cause you to lose sleep. All right. So I'm going to return to my default screen of the bright white. Well, from there, you, the overdrive driver, get to select font style and font size. These two buttons dictate size, and I can make my font smaller or larger with a single tap. And then I can pick my font. Is there a font that you like? Right, and then to tap out, I get to see the size and the style that I've selected. And you can change these frequently. You're not married to any of them. And finally, settings. And settings simply mean, do I want any columns in my reading? Much like you were holding a book. Again, this is a personal choice. Text alignment, left lined or centered. Okay, so I've got two columns here. I'm going to go back to one. That's my preference. Margins. Okay. So you can customize each book by tapping on the device in the center that brings up these three sets of tools. Okay, upper right hand corner in OverDrive represents a listing of your bookmarks. So again, if you're a book club member and you want to bring up special points during your book club meeting, this is a way for you to save those spots in the book by tapping on the bookmark, and you'll see that in a moment. To make that go away, simply tap in the middle of the book. Okay? And then we're going to continue our reading by swiping. 
Well, that didn't work. So here's a big takeaway. If I see the tools at the bottom, I cannot advance the page. To advance the page and continue reading, simply tap in the middle of the display and now swipe to the right. Tools with a single tap, swipe with a single tap. All right. Lower left corner tells me the page reference. Now, this is, you don't want to give a whole lot of credence to this. It's not like you could share information here and it mean anything because the size of your font and your page or display settings is going to dictate how many pages in the book. But just noticing it, it tells me I'm on page 18 of 315, all right? And I want to test that. So I'm going to come out of Overdrive and I'm going to open another app, say Safari. Okay. And I've checked on my news as much as I need to. I'm going to go back to Overdrive. And it automatically brings up the point where I left, page 18 of 315. Okay. So again, this is the app on your iPad and for Android users it's it's available to you as well in the Google Play Store called Overdrive. And it lets me read a digital copy of a library book coming from my library with a library card. And as you can see, I'm connected to the Plano Public Library. All right? So, library, bookshelf. Okay? So these are the books that I'm reading. Upper right-hand corner tells me if they're a narrative or a text-based or an audiobook. All right? So let's look at an audiobook for a moment. You acquire it the very same way. The user interface is a little different, and it provides audio instead of narrative. Here I've got a slider at the bottom that tells me my progress. Right? You can't hear it. I've got my iPad muted, but you can see that it's progressing because that's the universal pause symbol. So to stop it, simply tap it. If I missed a point, I can go back 15 seconds. Or if I have heard this, I can go forward. Okay. If I want to go all the way to the end of a chapter, tap the end icon. And if I want to continue to play, just hit the play icon. And it tells me that I'm in part one of nine in chapter two. And if I keep listening at this pace, it'll take 15 minutes. I use this feature a lot. As an example, if I have not read the book for book club, I can use the audio download and get there pretty fast. So I'm going to stop my audio. All right. Notice very similar upper right hand corner bookmark it. So if I wanted to bookmark a part, I could. Okay. And then find it by tapping this icon in the upper right hand corner. That gives me a list of my bookmarks. Make that go away, simply tap it. I want to come out of this audiobook, go back to my bookshelf, and there are my books. Notice it rearranges my bookshelf based on the last book I was either listening to or reading. Okay. If I'm finished with a book, I can press and hold, and I will get a menu. Remember, your iPad and your Android tablets are touch devices. Things happen when and where you apply pressure or a touch. So if I wanted to return that to the library, I could tap Return to Library, and it would give me a final answer. And I'll say Return, and it will remove it from my device. If you don't do that and you let the book expire, it will automatically remove it at that expiration date. So it's no longer taking up storage space on your iPad or giving you access to read it. Okay, so this is the app called Overdrive. When I look in the library, you'll see that another app 
called Libby is promoted. Libby is developed by the same app developers that de de developed Overdrive, but there are a few different things, so I'm going to open Libby here in a moment and show you. And again, this is where I would ask any questions, but your takeaways are that you're going to see two primary screens, the library, and it will give you the library's name here in the upper left hand corner. And by hitting menu, my bookshelf. Okay, to come out of OverDrive on an iPad, simply tap the home button and I'm now back at the screen or desktop of my Apple iPad. All right? I will skip how to download it, but you do it the same way. Simply go to the App Store Use the search feature, which is the magnifying glass, looking for Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. And as you can see, I've got it installed. So there it is. And it's coming up. Have to have an internet connection when you're looking or doing a search in the library for a book, audio book or text-based or narrative book. Okay. Libby's a little bit different. Newer product, right? Library on the left, simple tap, takes me to the library. I'm still using the Plano Public Library, okay? Have to have a library card number to set it up. Same library screen. Okay, April is Poetry Month. All right. From that view, I can also navigate without having to go to the menu, to Shelf. So on Libby, I can actually access both the library and my bookshelf from different, on the, on the same screen, okay? So here's the book that I'm reading now on OverDrive. Same touches apply. Lightly hold on the screen and swipe from right to left advances my text left from left to right. Okay, right to left advances my text forward. Left to right takes me back into the book as if I wanted to explore something that I've read in the past. All right? Just like we saw in Overdrive. If I tap it, I've got commands. These commands are in the upper left hand and the upper right hand corner. Left hand side takes me back out of the book that I was reading and back into my shelf or library. Okay, So that may not be what you want. On the right hand side, I've got several of my features or commands here. alignment, search, so I can search for a word or a name, bookmark, okay. At the bottom, I see a slider which tells me a progress through my reading. Page number, I'm on 30 of 402, okay. Menu, tap those three bars, and it's in here on Libby that you're going to find reading settings. And this is where, like we discussed with OverDrive, that you can customize the view of your text. So I've got a slider here that lets me manage my size. Here are my three options of the bright, the sepia, and the dark. And remember, the dark was reverse. Right? You don't want reading your iPad or your Google or Android tablet to keep you up at night. So that's how we manage our, our view settings. And some different view options. And I selected custom. And when you're done, tap done in the upper right hand corner. It takes you back to your text. And of course there's the bookmark. If there's a point on here I want to remember, 
I can tap my bookmark and I can always come back to it. Okay. To me, the biggest difference between Libby and Overdrive is in Libby, I have a greater option of highlighting. So if you're a highlighter, you tap and hold and you can highlight. And you can pick your highlight color or you can write a note and then done. So if this were a text and you were going to have a real analytical discussion on the text or you wanted to take notes, Libby I think is the better of the two apps. So again I'm going to tap it, tap to hold, make a selection, and once I let up off my selection it gives me an option to highlight. And I will tell you another takeaway here is it may require a few attempts so don't stress if your page changes or you don't quite get it. Multiple tries possibly and you will have access to a highlight or a note. Right? To find these tap right in the middle and options bookmarks and here in Libby you'll find not only your bookmarks but your highlights and your notes so you might say a little bit more comprehensive than Overdrive. Overdrive was the first app and Libby from the same developer very very comprehensive tool okay and when I'm done with all my bookmarks I'll tap done and back to reading okay likewise Libby lets uh, let you go back to the very same page. I'm 6% done in this chapter. I'm in chapter 1. Okay. And if I went out of Libby, opened another app, came back to Libby, I'm in the very same place. I can access the library with just a tap there or access my bookshelf with a tap that says shelf. Okay. Notice Libby tells me that these books are expiring soon. So if I finish them, I can send them back. and then continue reading my book. All right, so these are the ways that you can use your mobile device. You could do this on a phone if you wanted to read on your sm smaller mobile smartphone rather than your tablet. All right, we explored Overdrive followed by Libby. And I'm gonna hit the home button. You can't really talk about books on an iPad or an ta uh, Android tablet without talking about Amazon. Amazon's app is called Kindle. Much like your original Kindle device, the app that you can download from the Google Play Store on Android or the App Store for your Apple device is called Kindle, the Amazon Kindle app. These books, with, with a few, few exceptions for Prime members, are premium, which means, ladies and gentlemen, you have to buy them. So here is my library using my Kindle app, and it works the same way. Okay, thumbnail followed by text. And then when I tap the text, I have menu options. Right. There are a few others. Another app that's premium, meaning you pay for it, and this one is a subscription service, is called Scribd. S-C-R-I, B as in Bravo, D as in Delta, Scribd. So that's a $9 a month uh, monthly subscription for those big readers. And finally, you, you have to mention uh, the Gutenberg Project, as in the Gutenberg Press. You're not going to find John Grisham on Gutenberg. So Gutenberg's got about 60,000 books, mostly academic and historical, but check that out. Okay. So it's been great being with you this afternoon. And again, I'm Daphne. Look for videos coming from us concerning 
various types of mobile device, phone, Android, Apple, social media, online security, things of that nature as we wait through this uh, coronavirus period. It's been great being with you. I look forward to seeing you again.